Have you ever wondered why the cost of meat can be cheaper than a punnet of blueberries? Or why you can buy burgers in fast food chains for as little as one dollar? The answer is agricultural subsidies. But what exactly are agricultural subsidies and how do they work? Government subsidies are financial grants funded by the public's tax money and given by the government to private institutions or public entities in order to drive down production costs and make whatever industry has been subsidized more financially viable. Agriculture subsidies are some of the most well-known and also some of the most important subsidies that exist, especially in terms of scale and societal significance. Agriculture subsidies are useful for protecting the nation's food supply and can help farmers during unforeseen events. However, when it comes to subsidies, it's not all positive. For example, it is reported that globally, the public provides more than $1 million per minute in global farm subsidies. However, only 1% of that figure is being used to benefit the environment. Globally, the majority of agriculture subsidies for food go towards animal farms and crops such as corn and soybean, the majority of which is used as animal feed. In essence, the majority of our tax money is being used to drive down the prices of the food that is destroying our environment the most, as well as causing our leading diseases and illnesses, drastically increasing our risk from infectious zoonotic disease and causing suffering to tens of billions of animals every single year. The animal farming industries are given so much taxpayers' money that on average, each head of cattle in Europe gets a subsidy from the taxpayer worth around $2.20 a day, which means that the annual income of an EU dairy cow exceeds that of half the world's human population. In the UK, according to the government department DEFRA, around 90% of the annual profit of farmers who graze livestock comes from agriculture subsidies with some farmers only making £12,000 a year, even though they are given £44,000 in subsidies. Whilst for comparison, only 10% of fruit farmers' annual profit comes from subsidies. In essence, our tax money is being used to prop up industries that are simply not economically viable without huge amounts of government handouts. It's a similar story in the US, where tens of billions of dollars are given to farmers every year, and on top of the regular subsidies, in 2018, Trump gave farmers a $12 billion support package. And in 2019, he gave another $16 billion, mainly because of the trade war with China. However, studies from several economists showed that the amount being given to farmers through the bailouts was worth double the amount they were actually losing from the trade war. And even though farmers are the biggest recipients of corporate welfare, at the same time, $5 billion was being cut from programs such as food stamps that help provide food for low-income families. Subsidies don't have to be bad, but there is clearly a need for urgent reform, especially when considering that taxpayers' money is being given to perpetuate systems of farming that are devastating for the environment and rely on animal suffering and they are being used to prop up systems of farming that are struggling to survive even with the tens of thousands of pounds or dollars from the taxpayer. We may see the price of meat, dairy and eggs and believe them to be cheap, but the system is built on a false economy. These products are not environmentally sustainable or humane and nor are they financially sustainable either. Ultimately, as it stands, subsidies are being implemented in an absolutely devastating way but it does not need to be this way. The return of forests in Costa Rica followed the elimination of cattle subsidies and the implementation of payments for improving nature. The vast majority of Julio's 30 hectare farm in northeastern Costa Rica belongs to the jungle. He earns a stipend for leaving that forest intact. And this could be a story that is replicated all over the world we have the chance to profoundly help the natural world, providing healthier food at a cheaper cost, as well as helping struggling farmers. And it begins with changing the way that we eat. For as long as we keep buying these products, the governments will keep subsidizing the industries that produce them. But by changing how we eat, we are demanding a reform in how our tax money is spent as well.